everyone. A very good evening. You're watching The Money Show on ET Now. I'm Mubina Kapasi and this is your one-stop shop for everything to do with personal finances. Let's get start the show by telling you what we have lined up over the course of the next one hour. As you can see on your screens and as you've been watching right here on ET Now, the markets have rebound very, very smartly. In fact, from that low point of March or mid-March, we have seen a 40% rally come by in the equity markets, in the Nifty 50 and in the Sensex, which I'm sure has got you thinking, but how has my portfolio done? Has it really caught up with the kind of recovery that we've witnessed in the markets or is it still lagging the benchmarks, still lagging the indices? And when should you identify a laggard for what it is and decide to redeem it or exit that investment? That's what we'll be discussing. We'll be checking in on your portfolio and whether it has really participated in this recovery that we have witnessed in the equity markets since the mid since mid March and more specifically since I think roughly the mid uh, the middle of June, uh, where the rally has really caught up a very serious pace. We'll also be answering your questions and queries, so do send them in. Next, we will be talking about the Corona Kavach and Corona Rakshak. Uh, if you guys are not aware of what that is, don't worry, we'll be discussing that too. But furthermore, now that insurance companies have launched these policies, we'll be comparing premiums with PolicyBazaar.com, one of the biggest online insurance aggregators in India. And finally, just to rehash the big Twitter hack of 2020, we caught up with cyber criminal expert or rather investigator and, uh, you know, uh, cyber crime insurance experts yesterday. So we'll be rehashing that conversation just to ensure that you stay safe online, especially when now that you're working from home. So it's a power packed day right here on the money show without any further ado let me bring on board our very first guest mr heyman rustagi of wise invest advisors mr rustagi really appreciate you joining us today on the money show i hope you're doing well keeping safe amidst this pandemic now mr rustagi you know we've seen a nice uh, rebound come by in the equity market since since roughly about mid-march uh, so everyone's pretty pleased with that but uh, for you know the most most part of our viewers uh, they have investments in the market via mutual funds um, up until now of course and especially for long-term investors it's been read across the screens but uh, even though there has been this rally for uh, you know in the equity markets if you're a long-term investor you may still be seeing some bit of red in your statement but how do you ensure, Mr. Rastagi, that you know that your mutual fund portfolio as well is uh, is is joining this recovery that we are witnessing in the equity markets? Well, Bubina, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, if you were to look at you know the market level on 23rd of uh, March, that was the lowest point that we saw during uh, this COVID crisis. Uh, from there, as you rightly said, you know the markets have recovered almost around. If I look at Nifty 50 or Nifty 100, have recovered maybe around 40 percent plus. The point is that for every investor, you know, the issue is that whether my portfolio is performing in line with the market or not. And many a time they get a little disappointed because everyone is talking about recovery of 40, 41%. And when they look at their portfolio, they don't see that kind of return. I think there are a couple of uh, reasons for that. One is that when you look at your overall mutual fund portfolio, it has a combination of different funds. There may be some hybrid fund, there may be some debt funds, there may be uh, some equity funds. So when you try to look at your overall return, portfolio return and try to compare with the market, obviously there is going to be a disappointment because like I said, there are different asset classes in that. Now, even if you were to look at pure equity funds, uh, you know, you have large cap funds, you have mid cap funds, small cap, multi cap funds. And if I give you some numbers here, I think that will help uh, you know, viewers understand how how do they need to actually assess the performance of the portfolio. Uh, Nifty 50, as I mentioned, is around 41% up. Nifty 100 is around 40% up. Nifty mid cap is around 37, and Nifty small cap is around 39%. So if you if you look at you know why it is not visible in your portfolio is because you are seeing market return from a particular point point to point return. Whereas you have been building your portfolio over a period of time. You invested at 26,000, invested at 30,000, 36, 40, 41. So if you need to really compare to see whether your fund is performing or not, you need to look at NAV movement from that particular day from which you are comparing with the market. So let me give you some numbers here. If I look at some of the large cap funds, for example, if I look at uh, 
you know, uh, Kotak Blue Chip Fund, for example, has given around 41% in this exact same period. Then you have SDFC top 100, then you have Excess Blue Chip is the one which has maybe not performed as well because they have very high exposure to financial. But many of these funds have given around 36, 37, 38% return. Same is the case in multi cap, same is the case in mid cap. If you see in the mid cap, uh, funds have performed in the average of 30 to 35, 36%, whereas the indices have gone up by 37%. And even in the small cap, as I mentioned earlier, it's up 39%, but many funds. For example, if you look at uh, Nippon small cap fund, it's given exactly 39% return, which is matching the market. And other funds, for example, LNT uh, you know, Emerging Fund, uh, has given around 30 32% return. So the point is that maybe some of the funds have not kept pace with how the markets have moved, but they have generally performed. So it will not be visible in your portfolio because you're not invested on that day. We need to remember that our average cost may be higher. That's why it's very important for us to look at long-term performance. You know, you review your uh, ret returns, absolutely important because you need to make sure that your portfolio is on track. But if you really depend on short-term performance, that can be an issue because that may actually prompt you to make some haphazard decision. And the reason why you need to look at long-term is one, it moderates the impact of unusual good or bad short-term performance. And second is it also compensates for the particular investment style of a fund manager. In fact, I would like to add here, uh, you know, the value of funds, which were not doing very well pre-COVID days, ICICI Discovery has given a return of 44% from 23rd March, and LNT Value has given a return of 41%. So it's not that the funds are not performed. The way we look at these, we need to look at it differently. I can't compare market return with my portfolio, especially when I'm talking about a very short period. Well, you know, you're absolutely right, uh, Hemant, uh, especially that uh, point on value funds. I mean, up until now, value funds were really not something that performed well because value stocks as well were not really performing well. It was growth all the way at the HDFCs and the Reliance, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, Hemant, uh, this, uh, do you think that this, um, uh, the, this, this rebound that we are witnessing in the market and of course when you compare it with what your portfolio has done, do you think it will also give you an opportunity to realize uh, you know, which are the laggards and within the laggards which actually do not have any scope really uh, to recover, which are constantly failing to you know, deliver you returns whether it's during the good times or you know, during the okay times? Well, I think that's a very important point that you made, Mubin. I think it's very, very important because that's where I think uh, many investors sometimes wonder as to how do I figure out whether my the funds in my portfolio are laggards and how do I deal with them? As I mentioned earlier, one, I think you need to ascertain very correctly whether your funds in your portfolio are actually laggards or not. So how do you ascertain that? One, as I mentioned earlier, you look at the long-term performance. Second is you need to compare the performance with the peer group and the benchmark. I mean, I can't be comparing a mid cap or a small cap uh, with uh, you know a large cap fund because of, uh, in you know, certain phases where the large caps have done better than uh, you know other segments of the market. So one, I need to compare the performance of the fund in my portfolio with the peer group and with the benchmark. And that again, I think I can't be looking at a very very short term performance. The fact is that if you look at mid cap funds or the small cap funds, even though they have done very well in this recovery phase, and I think they will continue to do well going forward as the economy reopens and as the economy start doing well. But the fact is over a longer period, if you see in the last couple of years, these segments have not done well. So if I have kind of made a decision thinking that, okay, my portfolio composition is going to be 60% large cap, 30% in mid cap and 10% in small cap, and I'm comfortable with that and I'm willing to give it time, then I should not really be comparing my mid cap with the large cap fund because the phase will come when mid cap and small cap will definitely perform better than large cap. So I think as far as as long as I'm clear in terms of my allocation, I should be looking at long-term performance, not the short-term performance. And I have to be very sure that these funds are actually laggards because even the best of fund manager uh, will go through a phase where the funds will not do well because the money keeps moving from one set of sectors to another sector sector. We saw in the recovery phase, we saw pharma doing very well in the initial stages, and I think are likely to do well even going forward. Financials that were doing very well have not done well. So I think you, if you chase performance, then what will happen is all your fund portfolio will do exactly the same. So either they will do well or they will not do badly, which is not the way to do it. Sometimes you need to have different funds. They may not be doing well because of the composition of the portfolio today, but there is every possibility that going forward when the market kind of become broad based, they will start doing very well. So 
how do you identify then, you know, Mr. Asagi, like you mentioned, um, everything, every, you know, fund manager, every particular, uh, you know, investment could have a phase of bad times and good times. But, you know, when do you realize that, okay, listen, this one's really not going to perform and I think I should exit it before it makes my overall portfolio bleed more than it already is? So that, again, I think is a very important aspect. You know, whenever we talk about investing in equity for the long term, let's not forget that we talk about allocation to equity as an asset class. Uh, you know, and how do we invest in equity as an asset class through different funds? So our commitment is to the asset class, not to the fund. So two things we need to remember. One is not do not hold the fund for much longer because many times you end up making a bad choice or a choice which is not really good. And because you are uh, seeing losses in a portfolio and you you kind of determined to bring it back to the level at which you invested and in, then only you want to make changes, which is not the right strategy. My, you know, my belief is that we need to give time to every fund manager. I would say at least three to four quarters. If for three to four quarters, the fund is lagging behind the, uh, the peer group, maybe that's the time to see and also go beyond the numbers. You know, it's very easy to look at the numbers and saying, okay, this fund has given 5%, other funds are given 15%. We need to go beyond the numbers and really see, like I said earlier, the composition of the portfolio. Is this fund, you know, giving me some different kind of holding compared to what I'm holding otherwise? So figure out the reason. Don't go only by the number, but maybe give three to four quarters. And if it the non-performance or the poor performance continues beyond that, that's a time to look at maybe some other fund in the same category. Don't keep reshuffling your allocation to different segments because there's always a temptation that okay today large caps are doing very well if i'm taking out the money then i should go into large cap plus don't do that stick to your asset allocation and within asset class stick to the allocation that you have made to uh, you know different segments of the market yes in the past if you have made your portfolio very aggressive because a couple of years ago the mid cap and the small caps were doing very well maybe it's, this is a good time to kind of reshuffle or rebalance that but generally speaking, I would I would believe that if you feel that you have taken the right decision in terms of your allocation, stick to that. All right. Okay. Uh, you know, when, when when you sit to you know make an investment plan, you usually put in a lot of thought behind it. Uh, try and stick to that asset allocation, you know, um, and of course, only when there are change in circumstances, you know, where, where, where perhaps your risk appetite, uh, you know, or, or any other uh, investment objective has changed, that's when you essentially alter around or tweak around your asset allocation. And when it comes to this entire issue of whether you've been able to, or rather whether your portfolio has uh, rallied as much as the equity markets have or not, uh, well, firstly, you have to look at it from a more long-term perspective, like Mr. Rasagi said, and not short-term, not for a couple of months, because any which way, investing in equity mutual funds is more of a long-term story as opposed to, you know, a story of just a couple of months. If you are a long-term investor, uh, which you should be if you are investing in equity mutual funds, by the way, then um, this is something that really should not, you should not be too uh, perturbed about um, at this juncture. By the way, Mr. Rustagi, talking about asset allocation, um, you know, the last four months as the market as well has rallied, uh, let's let's assume, you know, my asset allocation is 70% in equity and 30% in debt. Um, uh, in, you know, with the market falling, and then rallying. We often say you need to rebalance and review your portfolio very periodically. So maybe when the equities markets fell, I must have probably increased my exposure to equities. Now that they have recovered and you know rebounded, should I uh, you know use this time to sort of reduce my exposure in equities, or do you think one should wait it out a little longer and only stick to the predetermined dates for review and not do it based on events? See, there are two, three aspects we need to see here. As you rightly mentioned, I think it's very important to rebalance your portfolio over a period of time because the main advantage of rebalancing the portfolio is rather than, you know, kind of exiting or entering into asset class completely or entering into asset class, which is not a part of your portfolio, is that you always remain invested in different asset classes. And it is very, very difficult to predict how the markets are going to function in short term or a medium term. So the, the major, major advantage of rebalancing your portfolio is that you keep remaining invested in different asset classes. Now, my belief is that when do you do your rebalancing? Either you do once in a year to make it more tax efficient so that you're, you know, you convert all your gains into long term and then you escape at least paying 50% a tax and you pay only 10%. That's one. Or second is you need to have some percentage in mind saying, unless my portfolio allocation changes more than 10%, I'm not going to make changes. So in this fall, for example, we saw that the market fell by you know, like almost 40% and the markets have recovered. We still have a long way to go 
to the pre-COVID level, but the fact is it happened in such a short period. So my recommendation would be do not alter your asset allocation in such a short period. I think you need to have a fixed period during which you rebalance your portfolio because otherwise you will have this dilemma as you rightly mentioned that okay I invested more money in equity now what should I do should I exit from there or not because you still don't know the market are still going to remain volatile for some more time because the economy can take more time than what all, we, all of us are envisaging for for recovery so I don't think we should really be rebalancing it looking at the market movement if I have decided to do it once in a year I think I should stick to that and then rebalance the portfolio only when that time comes. So Mr. Usagi believes that rebalance it only on the predetermined dates. If you've decided that, okay, you're going to rebalance it on the 31st of March every year, stick to that. Uh, preferably avoid event-based rebalancing. Uh, a lot of us tend to do that because, you know, uh, we think that, oh, okay, something has happened in the market and, you know, there's been a rally or there's been a fall. So, yes, let me just get in there and, you know, uh, uh, you know, finger my portfolio uh, or, or, you know, fidget around with it, which, according to Mr. Usagi, is not the best thing to do. Okay, so there you have it. That's, of course, uh, what uh, you can do, especially if your portfolio has not really uh, recovered or rebounded the way the markets have. And, you know, as well as um, some interesting tips on how you can even, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you, you know, look at different funds. The value-oriented uh, fund is something as well uh, that, you know, Mr. Rustagi has pointed out. All right, well, let's uh, now take on board some questions and queries. We've got quite a few of them. Let's try and answer all of them. Uh, first up, we have uh, Madhu Mantena, who has written into us on email, saying, I have been investing every month for the last two years, basically via an SIP, but he's currently sitting on a loss of 85000 He has five funds, uh, Axis Blue Chip, the Franklin Prima India, Franklin, uh, okay, then the ICICI Prima and Debt, and the Nippon India Small Cap Fund. Um, so roughly about six funds basically that he has. He's not mentioned any details with respect to his age or, or you know, what he needs the money for. Uh, but, you know, the fact that, you know, he's he's been investing for the last two years um, and the fact that he's investing in equity mutual funds, like we always say, you've got to invest in it, keeping in mind a long-term time horizon. So let's assume that Madhu as well has a long-term time horizon. Maybe he's saving up for his retirement, investing for the last two years. Uh, Mr. Rustagi, again, you know, I think it, it's it's very similar to our topic that we've been discussing. He wants to know that now that he's sitting on a loss of 85,000, what should he do with these, with these funds? And if any of these funds actually do deserve the axe from his portfolio. Mr. Rustagi? I think it's a very relevant question because uh, whether you've invested lump sum or whether you invested through SIP, you know, anyone who started SIP in the last four to five years is seeing the negative returns today. Maybe the it has recovered in the last, I would say, couple of weeks, but I think you were seeing negative return. And now when you see five year return, they've all come into positive territory. The reason for that, as I mentioned earlier, is because you have been investing at different level. And let's not also forget that when we talk about five year period of investing through SIP, your average holding period is only two and a half year. So obviously it's not an ideal uh, you know, time period for investing into equity. The more time you give your investment through SIP or as lump sum, I think you will see the impact of this volatility kind of reducing on, on, on your portfolio and you see how your portfolio start doing very well. So I think let's not, he should not be really too perturbed about seeing the negative returns now. But I think if he sees his portfolio maybe now or maybe after a week or so, he will see a different picture. Second thing is if you look at his funds, Couple of changes I would like him to make. He has a mid-cap fund, Franklin India Prima Fund. I believe that you know you have to be very careful in terms of when you select, especially the mid-cap and the small-cap fund. There are a couple of funds in this category which you know uh, have been doing consistently better. I think he can look at those funds, maybe uh, like Kotak Emerging Equity Fund. He can look at or uh, you know that which is a which is a very good fund, and also the excess mid-cap. Let me also highlight the point here that excess mid-cap has not done very well in the last couple of months. Again. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes the composition of portfolio does not perform during a particular market situation, but I believe it's a quality fund. One of these funds he can have in, in place of uh, Franklin Prima. He also has uh, an equity and debt fund ICICI. I believe that if his time horizon is longer, let's say 10 years or even more, uh, there's no point in having a balance fund there because your asset allocation should depend on what your time horizon is. So in that case, I would recommend that he can look at a good quality uh, you know, multi-cap fund, which has a bias toward large cap. And that's where he can look at Kotex standard multi-cap. So I think two changes. The rest of the funds are fine. Like I mentioned about Nippon small cap, 
um, it has given 39% return in the last three months, which is comparable to how the small cap indices have moved. Uh, Access Blue Chip has been performing very well. So I think other funds are fine. Two changes, and I think its portfolio should be fine. Okay, all right, there you have it. That's, uh, you know, the word of advice coming in, Madhu, for you uh, on, on how and, you know, what are the chops and changes as well that you could consider taking in your portfolio. All right, let's take on board our next query. It's coming in from Jayandhar. He writes into us saying that he's been investing in uh, three access funds since 2019, all for the long term, all in SIP mode, access blue chip and uh, uh, blue chip fund. Uh, access mid cap fund and access small cap fund. Uh, now, like you mentioned, you know, Mr. Rustagi, yes, um, access mid cap, for example, did have a bit of a tough time this year, but let's not forget the rally that it gave last year. Anyway, he wants to know if this portfolio is okay, should he continue? Uh, so, you've already given your thumbs up, for, you know, for access mid cap. Just uh, if you could tell us about the other two funds, and also he wants to diversify further. So he wants to buy, you know, three more in, uh, he wants to buy a couple more in a large cap, mid cap, he wants to buy in a multi cap. He also wants to buy an ELSS fund for the ATC purposes. So for large and mid cap, he's considering Canada, Rubeco, Invesco, India, Mire Acid. In multi cap, he's considering Parag Parik, Canada, Rubeco again, or Kotex Standard. Um, and in ELSS, he's considering Access, Mire, and again, Canada, Rubeco. So, uh, firstly, your opinion, he just has three funds, all from the same mutual fund house. But I guess he's realized that he wants to diversify a little away from that. And he's, uh, you know, wanting to buy a fund each in these three categories. How would you advise him? Well, I think it's the right decision to, to look beyond, uh, you know, the funds of a particular mutual fund. Like I mentioned earlier, all these funds have a fantastic track record. Uh, some of these funds have not done well, especially if you look at, uh, in fact, all three have not done as well as the peer group, I would say. But the reason if you look at why, you know, uh, the blue chip or the uh, multi cap or a focus 25 has not done well is because they have a very heavy exposure in financial and the financials have actually been not performing as well. But let's not forget one thing that if, if our economy recovers, the financial will have uh, an important role to play. So uh, I'm, I'm very sure that these funds will start performing well as, as we uh, move forward. Uh, so he can he can keep all these three funds, but I think it's very, very important to invest in at least two funds of two or three mutual funds. And the reason for that is that each fund house has a different style of investment, investment style and the philosophy. So I think it's important to invest in more than one style and philosophy. So yes, he's right that when he's looking at other fund, I think he's doing the right thing. Uh, so he can continue remaining invested in these three funds, but I will help him now in, in choosing the other fund. For example, large and mid, uh, I would go with maybe uh, Mirai Asset Emerging Equity Fund. Uh, that's a pretty good fund. On the multi-cap side, maybe he can look at Parag Parik Fund. And the reason why I'm recommending that for him is that this is fund. This is a fund which invests around 35% in international markets. So with this investment, he will have some exposure to inter international markets, especially the, the US markets. And we know that US markets have been doing very well. So I think it'll be a good idea to do that. Uh, Again, on the taxation side, uh, you know, it will again go back to maybe excess and excess, uh, uh, you know, long term equity fund has been doing very well. There are a couple of other funds also that have been doing well, because if he wants to move beyond one fund house, he can he can look at like Kotak tax saver has been has been doing pretty well. Mirai tax saver has been doing very well. So you can look at one of those funds. But I think it's important to look beyond one investment uh, in a fund house and, and kind of diversify your investment across uh, different fund houses. Well, yeah, uh, I, I guess that's uh, that's very valuable advice, Mr. Rustagi. Like he mentioned, you know, every mutual fund house, every AMC does have its own unique style of investing. Um, it may have phases when it works. It may have phases when it doesn't work. Uh, it's always a good idea to sort of spread it across different uh, asset asset houses, asset management houses rather, or mutual fund houses would be the correct term actually, uh, for this very same reason. So you can get to enjoy the fruits of everybody's different investment strategies. Always, um, you know, ensure that you don't have uh, all your mutual funds only from one AMC. Uh, just try and scatter it, scatter it around uh, different AMCs. So in that sense, uh, Jan that has taken the right decision. Uh, and, you know, that's, of course, Mr. Ristagi's view. 
Okay, uh, let's take one more query. Subramaniam Pichai has written saying, I've invested 5 lakh rupees in the HDFC balanced advantage fund in 2018. It's a lump sum investment. Uh, he wants to know if it's advisable to hold on. And also, he's asking if he should start an SIP either in the same fund or he's looking at a sectoral fund, pharma or technology. Which fund is safer as far as capital erosion is concerned? Okay, very interesting question. Again, unfortunately, we don't have the entire picture of his portfolio. But let's assume that it's only this 5 lakh rupees in the balanced advantage fund. Uh, maybe he doesn't have any other funds. Uh, what are the dangers, Mr. Rustagi, of having only one fund in your portfolio, just a balanced advantage fund, that too invested by a lump sum? And yeah, what's your opinion on these, uh, you know, investing in thematic funds? They are very tempting, especially because, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, a simple filter of the top performing mutual funds will show you thematic funds right at the beginning. I mean, last 10 years, maybe it was consumer, uh, you know, the consumer funds. Um, maybe the next 10 years could be either technology, pharma. I mean, who knows, right? So it's always very tempting to go for one of these uh, thematic funds. What's your opinion on these? Well, let's, let's address the, the first part of the query where he said that he has investment in HDFC Balance Advantage Fund. If this is the only fund, as you rightly mentioned, I think uh, it's, it's not a great idea to have only one fund. As we mentioned earlier, different fund houses have different investment philosophy strategies. So it's important to have at least more than one, at least two funds in your portfolio, because if one fund, the sole fund that you have in your portfolio is not doing very well for, uh, for a considerable period of time, then you will see underperformance in your portfolio. So my recommendation would be definitely if he wants to hold on to this, he can, but, but some of it can go into SBI equity and debt fund. The fund has been doing very well, good quality portfolio, consistent performance. So I would definitely like, uh, you know, him to diversify his investment and add that one one fund in that. As far as question on whether he should be doing SIP in the same fund, which is a equity hybrid fund, or going into a sector or a thematic fund, I think we're talking about completely two different kind of uh, investment, uh, you know, uh, baskets, which require a different kind of risk profile, different kind of timing. You know, the like Mavina, you rightly mentioned that there are time period when you see that these thematic and sector funds are doing very well. For example, if today you were to look at short term performance of pharma fund, it would look fantastic. If you look at the last one month return of uh, banking fund, it will look fantastic. But what we need to understand is the equity as an asset class itself is risky. So if you're a small investor, if you're a new investor, don't dabble into these because they require market timing. They require you to hold these investments for a certain period and exit from them to, to ensure that you, know, you kind of preserve all the gains that you've made. It's very, very difficult for any investor, small investor, regular investor to do that. Moreover, if you really look at any normal portfolio, if you do an analysis, maybe you'll find that barring maybe, you know, uh, pharma, because I think many of these funds have been like underweight on, on pharma, but most of these, uh, you know, sectors will be there already in your portfolio. So don't look at this investment. If at all you want to look at these investments, look at only when you have gained experience, you have built this in a decent size of portfolio, you understand the nuances of how to invest and what to expect and what not to expect from an equity portfolio before you actually start investing in this thematic or sector fund. So my recommendation for any investor who is looking at building uh, in a corpus over a period of time in a very systematic manner, stick to diversified fund, stick to, stick to the right kind of fund, give a lot of wages to the diversification. Within that, you have actually uh, you know a choice of going into well diversified fund and also maybe add some to the focus fund which invest in fewer stock but they are very well diversified at the sector level so stick to these you know diversified fund rather than try to dabble into these funds which may be very exotic may look very attractive but if you're not able to time it right if you're not able to exit at the right time it will be difficult for you to make money Yeah, when it comes to sectoral funds, it's all about timing it. And, you know, if you're investing in mutual funds, you're obviously, you know, you're not a full-time investor. Uh, so it could be difficult to do all of that. But we are completely out of time. We will not be able to take any more queries. Uh, don't worry, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. So uh, keep sending them in. Mr. Rastagi, thank you for joining us today on The Money Show. Quick break uh, right here on the show. When we return, we will be comparing the Corona Kavach and the Corona Rakshak premium plans being offered by various insurance companies. Don't go anywhere.